On Monday, for the first time in American history, a former president will be tried in a court of law. It follows the judge in Donald Trump's New York hush money trial, again denying his request for a delay. Mr. Trump is charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records to prevent news of an alleged extramarital affair from becoming public. William Brangham has a preview of this complicated and historic case. We will make America great again. Eight God years ago, Donald you, Trump, the real estate mogul turned reality TV star turned presidential candidate, was about to deliver a titanic political upset. It was the fall of 2016, and despite trailing in the polls to former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, the Republican nominee was all confidence. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington, D.C., and we will drain the swamp. But a month before Election Day, his campaign was sent reeling Whoa! when the Washington Post published this more than 10-year-old videotape. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss them. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the do anything. The story the political world has been buzzing about all afternoon, making vulgar comments about women. In full damage control mode, another lurking scandal suddenly seemed more ominous. Look up, Stormy, look up, For several months, Stormy, Stephanie Clifford, an adult film actress who goes by the name Stormy Daniels, had been trying, unsuccessfully, Hi, to sell her story of a one-time, decade-old so sexual you. liaison with Mr. Donald Trump. But just a few weeks after the Access Hollywood tape came out, Trump's lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, used a shell company to pay Stormy Daniels $130,000 of Cohen's own money to stay quiet. Hi, Donald John Trump. Then, when Trump became president, he repaid Michael Cohen with a series of checks that were categorized as legal fees. The details of those transactions, what their purpose was, who knew about them, and how all the checks and invoices and ledgers were recorded will be at the center of Trump's trial. Allegations that someone lied again and again to protect their interests and evade the laws to which we are all held accountable. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, a Democrat, has charged Donald Trump with 34 counts of fabricating financial records to conceal, quote, damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Unfortunately, the way the media has presented it is it's a hush money case, but that's not really what it is. It's about falsifying business records. Jerry Goldfeder is a senior partner at Cozen and O'Connor and an expert in campaign law. Doing that, that is a crime, but it's only a misdemeanor. It's a felony when falsifying business records is done for the purpose of concealing or committing another crime. And that's what District Attorney Alvin Bragg has charged, that Trump falsified all these business records because what he really wanted to do was to hide these facts to win the election. And so even though he's not being charged for that subsequent, that secondary crime, that's all it takes to move it from a misdemeanor to a felony. That's exactly right. While Bragg's indictment is full of examples of allegedly false retainer agreements and invoices and legal expenses, Bragg clearly wants this case seen as an attempt to subvert an election. But the law on that is complicated. If, in fact, these payments to Daniels were, in fact, campaign-related uh, and they weren't disclosed willfully, that could be a crime. Rick Hassan is an election law here. scholar at UCLA whether Law School. Payments. One big question here is whether these payments are campaign related as opposed to related to, say, Trump's personal life. So, if, for example, these payments were made solely so that he wouldn't face embarrassment with his family, then that wouldn't be campaign related. Just like if a candidate, you know, made a payment went and, and bought a boat uh, during the campaign unrelated, that would, you wouldn't have to disclose that. Can those be one and the same? Could Trump have been trying to stop him, his wife getting upset about an alleged affair? And could it also be a campaign violation because he was trying to stop voters from finding out? 
Sure. And I think that, you know, the question would be uh, kind of a causation question. Would he still have made these payments if he were not a candidate? I think that's what we'd be asking. Hassan points to the similar case of Democrat John Edwards, who was indicted for soliciting money to pay his mistress, Riel Hunter, who had a child with him while he was running for president in 2008. In court, Edwards argued the money was gifts from friends, not campaign donations, because they were meant to hide the affair from his cancer-stricken wife, Elizabeth, not from voters. He was acquitted by a jury with the finding that this was mostly about John Edwards' personal life, as opposed to being primarily campaign related. These can be tricky questions. Another complication in this case is that the prosecution's key witness, the one who will testify about the origin of those payments, how they were accounted for, and who knew what, is Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen is a very problematic witness for the prosecution in this case. And Jessica Roth teaches law at Cardozo Law School in New York City with expertise in white-collar crime. First, he's pled guilty to crimes that involve deception and deceit, um, including tax fraud, bank fraud, and lying to Congress. And those crimes go to his truthfulness um, as a witness. Secondly, um, he's been inconsistent in terms of what he has said about Trump's involvement in this scheme. He previously, before he decided to turn against the former president, said that Trump was uninvolved in the payments to Stormy Daniels. And then finally, he is a biased witness in the sense that it's quite clear, and he's been quite explicit about the fact that he harbors significant animosity toward the former president. They were once close. They are no longer. And so the defense, I think, will be able to point to that bias and suggest to the jury that it is coloring uh, Cohen's testimony. Jury selection starts Monday. Potential jurors will be questioned about their political allegiances, knowledge of the case, and whether they're able to render fair judgment in this historic, first-of-its-kind trial. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham.